In today's video, I'll be testing out a new feature of iOS 14.3 called Apple Pro Raw. At this stage, Apple Pro Raw is limited to the iPhone 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max only. Apple says Pro Raw is a 12-bit file that uses the linear DNG format to retain more information and dynamic range in the file, providing additional flexibility when editing exposure and white balance. Each file is approximately 25 megabytes, which is around 10 times that of the equivalent JPEG. So if storage on your phone is of concern, you may have to use this feature sparingly. To test this out, I'm going to head out for a wander around and shoot some photos as the sun sets as if I would any other day, and then bring them up on my Mac to have a closer look. I'll be using a tripod to take the photos, as I will also shoot the same image in the standard JPEG format to be able to directly compare to the ProRaw file. So let's get outside and take some shots. Okay, so we've got our images here. I've just airdropped them to my Mac and then loaded them up in Adobe Bridge. Uh, and I've just got three individual images that show off some of the features that you can do with the Apple Pro Raw files. Uh, you can see I've got the HEIC and then the corresponding DNG. Uh, and that's, that's the compressed standard JPEG sort of file and this is the Apple Pro Raw. So I'll open these two up first and we'll have a little look a bit closer detail. So this I thought was a great example of being able to change the white balance after you've taken the image. So you can see here this is quite neutral, doesn't really have any warm tones. This one is definitely warmer, the, the camera decided to set a warmer white balance to that. Uh, and if we did want to change it to cool it down a bit, we can change the slider here to cool it down or warm it up as need be. But if you have a look here, as we've warmed it up, it's basically just given it a yellow filter over the top almost. These yellows highlights up here start to look pretty ordinary and down here just looks just doesn't look great. Compared to for example the Pro Raw file here, if we warm that file up, you can see here it just looks a lot more natural. You have a lot more control over your white balance with the raw file. That's one of the benefits of shooting with the Apple Pro Raw format. If we cool that down, say something like that. Our previous yellow highlights have now become a more neutral colour. It doesn't look too bad. The rest is obviously far too blue. But if we were to cool this down, the JPEG file, just something like that, the blue just starts to look just like a blue filter over the top of it. It just looks pretty, pretty ordinary overall. So then this next two images, we'll open these up in Camera Raw. You can see we've got the HEIC versus the Apple Pro Raw file here. I'll just hit Auto and we're still a little bit dark so I'll bring the exposure up on that just to try and match that more closely. Bring the highlights down. And that's quite similar. Now with this one, if we zoom right in here, you can see how smooth everything is here. There's not a lot of noise in it. But then if we have a look at the compressed file, you can see there's a lot of digital noise in there. Now this was originally a shadow. It was in shadow because we've got quite strong backlighting here. Uh, so this structure was in shadow and the software of the phone has actually created that. Um, but in the raw file, it's interesting that that doesn't actually exist. So it's almost as if it's created a cleaner Apple Pro raw file versus the compressed file. And that's the same, same for all over the frame. So if we go here, you can see we've got the noise versus no noise here. It's a lot smoother. Even in the hair versus that. We actually lose a bit of detail here in the hair in the, in the Pro raw file, which is interesting. We'll open this up in camera raw. So I'll just hit auto just to bring up the pro raw file a bit versus the JPEG. Straight up, have a look at the plants here. You see they look quite lush, quite green, quite quite nice. And then if you go to this file, you can see the highlights have all been blown out a little bit. It's almost like the, the sharpening, over sharpening has, has caused it to look that way, I think. Um, just looks a little bit ordinary overall versus the Apple pro raw file. It just looks a bit more natural. Um, and then, so see here we've got, we'll zoom right into this, you've got the uh, the light around here. This is the Pro Raw versus the JPEG. 
With the Pro Raw, if we come over here and drop them shadows right down, you see you get a really nice crisp edge there. The highlights haven't blown in or bloomed too much around the outside surroundings. Now this is the same for this light over here, for example. If we go to the JPEG, try and bring the highlights down on that. It just looks a little bit fake, a little bit ordinary, versus the Pro Raw file looks a little bit more natural. And now with the Pro Raw, if we bring the shadows right up, and then we can bring the exposure right up as well. Now this is pushing things to the extreme, but if you have a look down here, you've still got detail all through here. None of the blacks are, are, are crushed. Uh, still got plenty of latitude in the file. Now if we go and do the same to the compressed file, bring the shadows right up and bring exposure up, you can see it just starts to look a little bit ordinary. Those blacks are just, they're black. You're not gonna get any more detail out of those compared to this file. Bring the blacks up a little bit out of that still. You see there's still detail in the, in the shadows, in the really deep shadows there, versus the compressed file looks like that. And now we have brought the exposure up. You can have a look how ordinary this starts to look here, versus the Apple Pro Raw file. That still actually looks not too bad overall. Like I've really pushed this file, file more than you ever would, uh, just, just for the example. And then if we go the other way, bring the exposure right down, shadows back a bit and then we'll do the same for this even if we go that and that this starts to get quite interesting if you look around the trees you get this sort of white spots around it very sharp very unappealing look versus the raw file it actually looks quite natural still uh, I'm not sure if that's part of the Apple computational photography doing its thing there, which then gets baked in to the compressed file, it gets saved in the compressed file, versus the RAW where it actually still looks quite natural. So if you really want to push the files to extreme, it's really worth shooting in RAW. And this example really shows that, I think. If you want to get a hold of these files, plus a whole lot more, check the description below for a link where you can download them for free. So as you can see, there are some benefits to shooting an Apple Pro Roll for your day-to-day -day snaps, especially if you do plan on tweaking them afterwards. The trade-off then is file size and storage space. So let me know below if you think Pro Roll is worth it to you for your everyday photos. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed my take on Apple Pro Roll for everyday use. As always, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll get back to you. If you did find this video helpful and would like to see more, click subscribe and give it a thumbs up as this really helps the channel grow and I'll see you in the next one.